Hello? Yo. Uh, that's Brandon. Uh, he always not on. Who's here? Hey, what's up? Who? Who's here now? Just you and Brandon? Just me and you. He said that. He said he was coming on. Um, and he had to do make some coffee or something like that. Okay. And I don't know if so, you know, I, I, I guess I'll just drop in. All right. Uh, I'll call. This guy. Okay. Hello? Hello. Well, I guess yeah. that's Neo right there. Hi. Yeah. What's up? How much you? Chilling. What's up? Chilling, chilling. Cool. All right. You guys gonna be calling Glenn now? Just calling him. Hello? 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 Yep. Hello? I'm here. Hello, is Glenn there? Hold on a second. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Ben? Yes. Hello? Hello? Hello, Ben. Hi. What's going on? Hey. Hey, Danny's here. Are you guys on the phone? Yeah, why? What happened? No, yeah, oh, yeah, we're on the phone. About 10 minutes to finish off feeding the animal. Okay, and? we'll call you back. 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Hello? <laughs> That's farm life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, I was talking to Brian. That things are coming together for him. Brandon? Oh, down there. No, Brian. Oh, Brian. You talked to him today? Yep. I think he he might call in or... Um, uh, my, my, I don't know. Call okay. the phone or something. I don't know. <coughs> Okay. Time's up. Uh, Neo, Neo, what questions do you got, Neo? I know you got some interesting questions. Uh, for Glenn? Yeah. Uh, probably ask him about, probably heard about the thing where right? the fish and the birds dying. Probably yeah. ask him he thinks about that. Probably some type of interference. Uh, I think... I think it's just, I, I wasn't, I me mean, when I looked at it, I, I was looking at more of like. Allegory? Yeah, the, 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 what were they trying to, what message were they trying to put out there? Who is not needed anymore? That's what you got to look at. Or figure out, you know. I'm trying to signal that somebody's probably not needed anymore in the system. I know um, that things happened before, though. It happened in 2009 and in 2008. It was just uh, birds dying, but I haven't seen... Actually, no, it's fish, not birds. But yeah, the birds know. happened last year, too. I mean, um, fish happened last year. It happens all... Uh, you know, it happened a few times around the road um, recently, so it's... Yeah, it has something, when I spoke to Glenn Liz, it has something to do with um, maybe cardinal in the uh, clergy, so maybe not being needed anymore. So maybe he'll expound on that a little. He's also been asking about the Caucasians, uh, what year he thinks they evolved. Yeah, because something about you, you said you wanted to 
on Facebook, um, you and Aramis saying something about the Aryan invasion or something like that. Yeah. Because from what I've looked into, I think it's a bit more older, probably like 2,000 to 4,000 years older. He says maybe like 4,000 BC, but it can go even to like six to 10,000. And then I'm probably asking about the boars too, if that was an allegory or not. The what? The boars. The said, bo what about them? Said um, humans evolved from that. No, no, he didn't. Um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say like he evolved directly from the boar. It was more like we we have a lot of like links to because I because like, humans are like I think. Humans are like uh, they have there's links to different animals there. Yeah, other we animals. Do. We do. Monkey, pigs, cats. Right. Probably he meant links instead of a direct descendant or a common ancestor of some sort. He said that in his post. I will we look it up again. I think I asked you, but I don't know what you responded. Look for it. Um, uh, this guy's gonna be calling in. Says it's been used. He says he's trying to put in the the code. The um, and it says he says telling him it's in use. It's in use. Maybe because he's calling. Is he hitting pound Google. after it? Um, so he said, and then he has to put his own like pin, right? Yeah. Uh. Hello. Hello. Hey, it's Brandon. Oh, you fine. I just sent you. Huh? Yeah. I, I missed the part where it told me to just push one pound. Oh, okay. I thought I had a password that I had to put in. Yeah, this is Brandon from Ontario. I'm, I'm hey, what's up? With. Hey. Hi. How many other people are here? So, this is Dana... Uh, What's up? uh Mike from California. Yeah. And me. Oh cool. <clears throat> For now. I found this post. Hero evolution formed Homo habilis, your habs from boars mm -hmm. as the first human being two hundred thousand years ago. I said from boars? Yeah. Uh, I thought I said Homo habilis came as like as this type of human being, like the, what we all came from two hundred thousand uh, years. There's a lot of background noise. What happened? There's a lot of background noise. Yeah. Um. Is that me? Is that me? Maybe. It sounds like someone's raking on the street. <laughs> Are you outside? Anybody outside? No, I'm inside. Nope. It's not my phone. I'm gonna mute my phone. So. Yeah. It's gone. Is it gone? Yeah, it stopped. No, it's back. Uh, no, here. I think it's your phone, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, he's not coming in too clear in general. It sounds like 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 it's not like interference, but like it sounds like it's whenever somebody says something. Actually, it sounds like something. Like, can you check check the the chat and see who else is? If there's anyone else on this? <laughs> I, I don't. I can't check it. Uh. It's got, like someone recycling bottles or something in there. Like, what? 
Weird. It's not my phone. I know it ain't my phone. So, I don't know if you, somebody should check their phone. Um, Maybe um, what? Huh? Um, there's guest number five. I don't know who that is. Probably Brandon. There's S. California, South California, out to me. And then there's yeah. another person in California. Maybe that's you. Maybe you, like, kind of, like, signed on twice or something. Uh, there's five people. I couldn't hang up and come back on. Yeah. It's not me because I just muted my phone and it's still going on, so. It's not Mike. It's not Neil because it's still on. So it has to be Brandon. Or maybe, you know what? I don't know. Maybe I can call on. Call I didn't hear it until Brandon came on, though. Yeah, it's Brandon's phone. Brandon? Yeah. I think it's your phone, man. I think, like, somebody in your background or something, or somebody. What What does it sound like? Like. You don't hear it? You don't hear, like, that scratching noise? It's like. No, I don't. Scratch. Oh, so. It probably is your phone if you're not hearing it. Everyone else is. I'm on voice. You're on Google Voice, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, you ever had that? Yeah. Oh, it's always having those problems. Yeah. Whenever I use that, it always messes up too. So once you try, like once Brandon, once you try, like um, hanging up going and back. going back. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Please. Yeah, be right back. All right. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, going back to. On Glenn's site, I'm reading what he wrote on his post. He wrote that evolution formed Homo habilis mm-hmm. from boars as the first human beings 200,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. So what he's trying to say is that the link with Homo habilis uh, as their direct descendant is from the boars. From my studies... What that what year was that? 2004, uh, June... Yeah, two, like... It, it, there's a lot of things in this post that, like, it kind of, like, changes over time. Post. So, Cause, cause I like, there's things that he said that's not even relevant now. You know? Well, it kind of makes sense if you could take, like, organs from those animals and put them in humans, and they work. You know, they don't get rejected. Like, I don't and think that, like, it's, it's like a boar evolved into a person. I think it's a, a boar was... We have a link. Like, Hello? Yeah. Now nah, the sound's gone. Yeah, the sound's gone. Sounds better now? Yeah. For now, yeah. yeah. I also adjusted my microphone settings, too. Okay. But, I, yeah, I think it's, um, it's like, it's like when you look at, when they show you a picture of, you know, a reconstruction of what clan mother would have looked like. They show a look that looks almost like an ape. I remember I asked Glenn about that a while ago, and he said something like, um, it's because they were um, around those animals. They were around uh, apes. Uh, I don't think meant Homo habilis, though. Cause yeah, that's Homo habilis. They're linked to boars, too, and stuff. Everywhere you look, they say that Homo habilis uh, originated or lived from 2 million to 1 million years ago. Mm-hmm. That was their time frame. Yeah. And then Glenn saying 200,000 instead of 2 million. So I don't know where he's getting this information from. Maybe it's 2 million years as, um, as like, what they evolved from. Because if, if they were born from the same animals, Neanderthal, and they could be millions of years old. Well, cause if they're both from the same animal twins, I mean, they're around the same age, then. Uh, Homo habilis is a lot older from what science says uh, than modern human and Neanderthals. 
Neanderthals, mm-hmm. I think they branched out probably around like 100,000 years ago. Yeah, I think you're right, because Homo habilis, that's why she always is linked to like uh, intuition and the past, because she was actually Neanderthal's past. I th- yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think you might be right about that. He's actually like everybody's past. Neanderthal's past. So, yeah. And if we have time, I'll probably ask him about uh, hermaphrodite. Uh-huh. Remember, I, you know that sounds there, it's not completely gone. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it it must be because the microphone is so sensitive. That's what it is, probably. What does it sound like? It sounds like... It sounds like a, a mattress spring. But, like, a little more drawn out. Maybe my keyboard? No. It's it's, like it's picking up a sound it's pick on your microphone or something like that. It's definitely that. It's that. It's that Google voice. Yeah, but I guess anyway. we might have to deal with it. I don't know. Maybe try muting it until you like you're gonna talk. Does that work? I don't Let me know. see. Was it gone for that five seconds? Yeah. yeah, it was gone. But is it back now? No. Not yet. Uh. Oh, should I call Andy? You think Andy's around? Yeah, if you want. See if he's around. Is the sound still gone? Uh, So I turned down my mic too. Uh, you don't mind me, I'm just making a phone call. Hey Andy. Yeah, I want to know. Do you want to call again? Yeah, I want to call in like a couple of minutes. So yeah, the the, the pin number is two nine seven two one. Uh, no, no. I'm done. Okay. Yeah, that was that was Andy. I was just he said he's gonna call in ten minutes. Now nobody was talking, man. Damn. No, not that I heard, anyways. I was at a loss for words. <laughs> reading stuff. Oh. Remember what I told you about uh, meiosis? Have you read about that? Meiosis. You talking about like the splitting of us mitosis? Oops. Uh, meiosis was like the first evolution of actual sexual reproduction where it had mm-hmm. genders involved. 
Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, the first genders in eukaryotes, like small uh, multicellular organisms, mm -hmm. evolved about a billion years ago, or maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, concerning hermaphrodites, it's kind of strange if original humans were hermaphrodites, since genders existed that long ago, mm -hmm. and they're... You, you, you don't see any other animals like primates or any uh, vertebrates that are hermaphroditic. But it seems like an outlier or something. Well, uh, I don't know. I guess Rare. some things like you, you, uh, you, you need like uh, some information to reconcile that in your mind. Because it's something that you haven't been able to. I've seen the allegories. It's not making I've sense seen, to you. I've seen the allegories. I've seen what you told me. I see the connection. Yeah, but you're looking for, like, a hard, like, scientific proof. Like, you're looking for something that's, like, no, that's just kind of blatant, I'm, right? I'm using counterfactual to see uh, the validity of this claim. Mm -hmm. And regarding the premise, it makes sense if you make one small change, and the change is that... They weren't hermaphroditic, but what they're trying to do is create a new hermaphrodite species. That makes sense. But then, naturally evolving, the hermaphrodite doesn't, based on everything I just said. All you have to do is look at any other animal, except the worms. They aren't hermaphroditic. So it's pretty rare if this is so naturally. possible it happened uh, by genetic engineering, but someone had to be there with the technology to do that. It seems like they were hermaphrodites too, um, the Neanderthals. You don't see, like, when you look at them, all the, you know, imagery that I've seen of them, that there was no, like, distinction between man, male and female with their race. That's it seems to be one race. What? One? It's, um, a pretty, it's a pretty big thing to hide. Because not every scientist is in on it. You know, they're looking at the information. So you have low level scientists, like your average person that just wants to study mm -hmm. anthropology. Mm -hmm. So if they're analyzing the genetic material and they see that it only has XY chromosomes, mm -hmm. um, they're going to consider it male. A hermaphrodite, um, I'm guessing that it's most likely it would have some type of chromosomal abnormalities. In other words, the chromosomes would be different than a normal male or a female. So they would catch that. <laughs> that noise, man. That noise is like, whoa. What, that crinkling? Yeah. But, uh, no, oh, was, sorry. That's, that was candy. No, it was before the crinkling. It was like, it was like, you know what it sounds like? Tin foil. <laughs> you know. Yeah, these these candies are wrapped in like some tinfoil wrapper thing. No, but it, no, the the I heard the 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 candy wrapper, but it wasn't loud as like the sound right before the candy wrapper. Oh, uh, we're anyway, it's sensitive. It's, yeah. Uh, um. Okay. All right, I'm gonna call this guy up now. Has it been 15 minutes? Yeah, it's been like 20. All right, I'm going to call him up. Hold on a sec. We can hear everything you're doing on that end, man. <laughs> Your mic is like... Oh, you can hear me even chewing? I hear everything. You can hear every... <laughs> It's funny because when I'm doing recordings, I usually have to turn it up. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hi. Hey, what's up, Glenn? Hey. Hi. Who's here? All right. It's, Hi, Glenn. Okay, it's, it's, it's being recorded. It's Brandon from Ontario. 
don't know if you ever spoke to him before. It's no, I uh, haven't. Mike, you, you also know him as Neo from California. Dana and Andy said he'll be calling in. Okay, I, I was expecting a, about 2 o'clock, so. Oh, you were, were you? I got the, uh, I waited till about 2.30, and then I went out to feed the animals. So that's why I got stuck in in time here. Oh. Anyways, what's happened? Um, hmm, uh, a lot of stuff, um, I don't know, uh, uh, Mike O'Neill wanted to ask you some questions because he, um, is, you know, he's been, wanted to, um, I, I, I thought you could answer those questions, um, and maybe better than I could, I don't know, but he, he had, Okay, speak out louder. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but it's kind of low. Uh, okay. Um, pretty much what I wanted to... Can you hear me, though? Yeah. Okay, what I wanted to ask was, I've been looking at all the information about other animals to see what other hermaphrodites could have existed in the past. And I've looked at all the different uh, primates, and I haven't found uh, any scientific evidence of there being hermaphrodites. But I have seen allegories of it. I want to know. Did you start with worms? Worms were the only uh, organisms, but yeah. there's a wide uh, evolutionary gap. Why, why would worms be hermaphrodites and and not others? Worms would be hermaphrodite. Worms are more likely to be a hermaphrodite because they're more older than uh, humans or the Homo sapiens. If you look Less at likely to find a partner traveling through the earth. Therefore, if you start a new species, then less likely to find a partner. I can understand that. The thing is, a worm is uh, it's more co more simple than a human. And if you look at the evolution of gender, the gender arose, male and female, about 2 billion years ago uh, in meiotic uh, division, so multicellular organisms. Now, if evolution occurred of gender that uh, long ago, 2 billion years ago, it seems a bit inconsistent for Homo habilis or the clan mother to have evolved naturally into a hermaphrodite? Not likely to find a partner. Okay. Is I can understand that, but I'm just trying to weigh in all the evidence. I haven't seen any other uh, animal that can do this. Well, you're going to see another one pretty soon because we're going back in that direction. <laughs> yeah, with genetic so, engineering, it's totally possible. I understand that. So get ready to go inside the woman you love <laughs> for other reasons than you're doing it now. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the things I wanted to ask, the evolution of hermaphrodite. Yeah, what? since... since uh, the Neanderthalers brought about uh, the uh, genders in clan uh, mothers. It's not necessarily uh, a fact that the Neanderthalers were also hermaphrodites. Uh, they may have had the gender for Homo sapiens and Homo habilis, uh, at an earlier period before they had their cataclysmic event. In any event, it's a, a good point to make, but it comes back down to when there's no partner around, everybody's equipped to do everything. I have to look into that even more. I don't know if you're speaking now, but I can't hear you. All right. So, yeah, um, yeah, Glenn, I, I wanted to, um, I've been looking at, um, um, 
uh, you know, here and there, I was looking at like current events, things that uh, peop- things that were happening, there, like news clips. And I think Dana mentioned to you, like it was all over the news. Um, you know, a th- more than a thousand birds just dropped dead, and these certain species of bird were like uh, red red winged uh, blackbirds or something like that. And I, I was thinking it was some type of um, allegory. And, and there was another allegory. Uh, there was a shooting in Ohio. And um, the shooter, his name was Michael Ferryman. And uh, he killed a sheriff, female sheriff. And, and her last name was Hopper. And there's another sheriff who was uh, shot and his lungs collapsed. And his name was Bloom. Last name was Bloom, and I was thinking, hey, maybe they was they were saying, you know, he's a ferryman. He we're, we're getting brought to the other side now, you know, because that's what ferrymen do. Right? They bring you yeah. relief from life to death or something like that. It's always possible, Jordan, but uh, it's media theater yeah. that is being put on. If if um, these things are a regular happening. And way this week, there's been about five or six different events in different parts of the world. There's one in Quebec with uh, pigeons today, I think. There's been fish and different kinds of birds. So they keep repeating that this is a natural event. It's funny that we have never heard of these natural events. And if it's natural, why are they now putting it on the news? unless they have a purpose other than the story of birds falling out of the sky. Rocks falling out of the sky are one of the events supposed to occur between now and the end of the northern hemisphere. Is this an allegory for rocks falling out of the sky? Could very well be. But if they've got fish jumping out of the water and dying as well, then you have uh, the beginning of a nova affecting something under underground, underwater. And uh, we here and, and Jenny in Ogdensburg this week have been hearing gurgling in our water systems. We have wells here, 125 feet underground, and we're on the Canadian Shield, the both of us, mm-hmm. and if we're getting more of this gurgling going on, air bubbles in the water, uh, it could very well be that uh, the Canadian Shield has begun to rise somewhat, something like the Australian plate uh, on the western side of Australia uh, has risen, I forget what the story was, 13 feet uh, a month or something like that. I I forget the exact details, but that tipped uh, Australia so that the eastern side, northeastern side, is uh, underwater, not simply from the rain that falls, but and if it keeps on rising, of course, then it will affect all of the other cities, Sydney and uh, um, the one to the south there where all the rich people live. I forget the name right now. So are we no dealing more. with uh, allegory? Very much a possibility. The media is making a big deal about something they say is normal and Mm -hmm. that's not normal Um, the beginning of it was always with black birds of one kind or another with red markings that suggest something like uh, uh, ecclesiastics but in any event what we're seeing across the entire world in politics, in business, in the mafia, um, 
in in religion is a change in management is the general theme that is going on the the police in Toronto are basically having a problem since the G20 the police in Ottawa are having a problem since a woman was found beating up another woman in in a cell on, on closed her there. The mafia boss in Montreal has been assassinated, so is his um, son or something, and last night or the night before, they blew up their funeral parlor. Uh, uh. There's all kinds of these things, women taking over, control over uh, South American countries in Argentina and Brazil yeah. and there's been one in Chile and Australia has one now so does uh, New Zealand I don't know if she's still there but she had been there recently uh, so a lot of uh, women who are questionable women uh, are taking positions of power. In the U.S., of course, if anything were to happen in Washington, knock out uh, the leader of the House, the vice president and the president, that means Hillary would step into the role of president. Uh, that's uh, expected by a number of people. Uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of the approach uh, towards major flood across the country. Uh, the the word wash is associated to the word cleansing, which has been a native uh, a prophecy for a long time that the North American continent would be cleansed. Well, in the last week, we've had the heaviest snowfall in the world fell on Vancouver Island on a ski mountain called Mount Washington. It has something like 30 feet or something of snow uh, almost overnight. Can't even get to the ski lodge, I'm told by a number of people. And uh, across Western Canada, uh, I know that in, in Fargo, uh, leading up to the Canadian border, all of the earth um, on either side of the road seemed to be completely leveled with water. Uh, and any new water arriving there would have no place to go, and yet they're expecting the biggest flood due to the melting of snow from the Red River coming out of the, the north there to the Missouri and, and Mississippi rivers. And uh, the, the place where Jenny wanted to cross the border is called Emerson. That's a play on the word immersion. And just north of Emerson are, of course, two very big lakes. Lake Winnipeg, Lake Winnipeg, Gosis, I think it's called. Wasn't um, a guy, I think Warren Buffett or uh, one of them, he said lived uh, over there? In, uh, at yeah. Least near, uh, it's uh, near Brandon, uh, Manitoba, and, and Winnipeg, that basic area. Plus you have Lake Diefenbaker, uh, that is... Uh, a catch basin, basically a reservoir created to send water down uh, the uh, Capel River Valley that will join the Red River as well, adding to the water. And that whole area seems to be uh, dominated in structure by uh, the Franciscan monks monastery on top of a hill overlooking that entire area. Uh, religious institutions 
are in all these places. Ralph Waldo Emerson is the uh, American author uh, uh, for which the town of Emerson, the border between Manitoba and North Dakota, is, uh, is referred to because of his writings. Ralph Waldo Emerson used to write about not following the masses, but making up your own mind based on the evidence that you see around you, all around you. And, and it, uh, it's interesting that his first name, Ralph, is linked to the word raft. The second name, Waldo, is linked to the word radeau, which is a raft in French, and then Emerson, immersion, and radeau in, in French is, is a very interesting as a concept, because it's the concept of Huckleberry Finn on a raft. You start with a craft, and you throw out the sea, and you lose all control, and you have a raft. You... Uh, uh, look at history and you'll find the letters to the word Rado in Leonardo da Vinci, Ardo. Ardo can be found also in the word Norad. It can be found in the word Radon. Uh, you, can, you can find that code word of meaning raft all over the place. I'm in fact, building a raft right here as a symbol of what's going on in the front field so that it can be seen by passers-by. A craft would be more uh, Noah's Ark, for example. It had devices to allow the ship to be moved from one place to another by controlling the direction, whereas a raft, you're you're just basically going with no direction. You're just wherever you happen to hit is uh, where you can make land type of thing. And that's, that's an allegory for what is happening now. One of the things that you know about gas is some gas goes down to the lowest spot while other gases rise to the highest spot. And propane, for example, if you put a can of propane on a top floor, it will kind of drop down and, and affect more the bottom floors, whereas radon travels in water. And it comes out of the water. To, right now, there's a story about a place near Ottawa where the guy opened up his tap. I think the place is called Chelsea, Hell's Sea. And from the water, they measured radon gas lifting up at about eight times the normal level. That might be something that could affect flying birds or birds that are in flocks. Uh, the whole idea of uh, uh, radon is to link it to nuclear activity so that, for example, if the uh, locks are broken at, at uh, Lake Superior at Sault Ste. Marie, uh, one of the first places hit would be Elliott Lake, which is Canada's uh, oh, nuclear uh, mining site, and therefore it would release a lot of radon gas. You can imagine that a flood coming from Lake Superior uh, would destroy people on the ground as the big tidal wave comes flying through. But that's not the worst of it, because out of the water would come radon gas. And those people who think they've escaped the, the possibility of being killed because they live high up would in fact be affected by, by the gas. And the experience in uh, Chernobyl was that if, uh, 
if there's a nuclear plant accident, very few people die immediately. Uh, less than a dozen people around the plant died overnight. But in the year that followed, more than a million people around the world died from the effect of radiation coming from radon gas around the world. So uh, people like Montreal, uh, who live on an island in the middle of the St. Lawrence and have a, a mountain in the middle of the island called Mount Royal, Royal basically is a play on the word Troy, uh, they think they're above it all because they live on the mountain. Most of the people on the mountain are either very wealthy or they're ecclesiastics. But if water kills the people at the base, gas can also kill the people who are up on top of the hill. So nobody and really so escapes that kind of stuff. Any uh, any other questions that I might deal with? So they're going to release it. Like uh, I remember you saying something like they like how they even would have this gas is like you said that um, people were refusing to move um, large quantities of the stuff. Yeah, what it, what is going on right now in that area? is uh, in a town on Georgian Bay, which is right in line with the water coming from Sault Ste. Marie, mm -hmm. uh, they are accumulating uh, a large number of nuclear reactors, used nuclear reactors. Uh, I think the latest count was 31. And Supposedly, they're there because they're on their way to Sweden. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Sweden has the technology that can break down uh, old nuclear devices into its component parts, clean it up, and sell the metal on the metal market, on the open market. But in order to get it to Sweden, they have to be put one or two at a time on a ship, and the ship sent through the Great Lakes to the St. Lawrence Seaway and through the seaway out to the Atlantic Ocean. And no one along the seaway uh, w had been asked permission. You know, none of the mayors or... or um, regional directors or whatever were invited to give an opinion about these nuclear re reactors going by their front door. And when they found out about it, there was a big scream for an environmental assessment. So these nuclear reactors are going nowhere for the time being. They're not being allowed to be loaded onto ships, and they're standing right underneath where the water would flow. It, there are three uh, locks at Sault Ste. Marie, which... Uh, so that's just an excuse to, for... Yeah, it. which is, you know, Sault Ste. Marie is a name in, in French which means a jump. So, S-A-U-L-T means to jump. And what is planned for there is called a blind thrust. In other words, a, um, an earthquake that goes up instead of sideways. It's an elevation like you would get from a jack. You pump up a jack and things rise. Well, what they're planning to do is, is to jack it up, and that's done probably with some uh, shape charge underneath there where mining has gone on, copper mining for years and years, back to uh, native times a thousand years ago. Uh, they would jack up that area 
that would cause it to crumble. Any any wall that is holding back water is going to crumble if you push it up. The uh, the jacking up of of uh, uh, real estate is part of the normal plan that the troglodytes had for determining where they wanted certain things to be put on the surface so that it would match with something they had below ground. So they would jack up and, and they create a hill. By creating a hill, they would then say, well, that's where you're going to build your parliament. Parliament Hill would then be built uh, on, on top of something that can communicate from below ground. The earth is not called ear for nothing. It's a listening device, and the listening device is from below. Same thing happens with Capitol Hill. I was born in a place called Sandy Hill. Mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton tells you a little bit about the link she has to that as well. Um, the Beatles so, made a song, um, Fool on the Hill. Yeah. The Seven Hills of Rome. Mm. each having a different uh, reason for being there. Um, so if if the locks crumble, the water comes down from Lake Superior and, and hits immediately into something called Gore Bay. Mm. Gore Bay is the name they used to give to the premier of Russia, yeah. Gorby, Gorbachev was called Gorbe. And if you look at the word Gorbe, it's a play on the word regal. Regal means to go again, to do something over again, be born again. And how would that be linked to in another? The next place the water would hit would be over a small peninsula, Georgian Bay. George has Rigo in it as well. So when you have two hints side by side, it's usually more direct, more important than just one mention. Over on the left-hand side is Elliot Lake, that's a play on the word toilet. Over on the, uh, that's on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side is Lake Michigan, and the peninsula is shaped like a mitt there, the lower peninsula. And on the other side is Lake Huron. The key word in All of their talk about Caucasians, if you look at old movies and stuff like that, you'll have Ben-Hur, the son of Hur, H-U-R, Huron. When you get over to uh, Iraq, the town is called Ur, U-R, or R-U, are the two key letters, U and R. Mm -hmm. You'll find it in the word Rumsfeld. Mm -hmm. You'll find it all the way through when you start looking for tracking these words. According to the natives that I've spoken to, the prophecy of the cleansing is attached to another prophecy. And their prophecy is that the human being was first made in North America. When I first heard them say that, it didn't make much sense to me because that's not the evidence. However, there is, in fact, a possibility that the second batch of Sami those are the two 
the groups that, that populated um, Finland in two groups, one 4,000 years ago, one 2,000 years ago. They have the simplest genome of all the populations on the planet. Very few individuals have migrated into Finland, therefore their DNA is bottom line type of thing. The first group, and they're called Sami, Ami, as in Islam, and as Ami in French means friend, friend uh, has uh, the word rien in it, which means nothing. The show called Friends on TV was a show about nothing. They kept repeating that. It was a show about <laughs> nothing last 10 years. Uh, the second batch of DNA arising in Finland came from somewhere different than the first batch. first batch seems to have come from from the east, from the direction of the Himalayas. But the, the, that's the first batch. The second batch came from a direction that seemed to have been related with North Africa. And these are people that I believe we call the Golden Horde the uh, Caucasians. And one of the migrations matches exactly with the time of switching over from B.C. to A.D. or the time of Jesus Christ's allegory there. The Native people that I spoke to seem to suggest that there are prophecy talks about man being born on what is is uh, the Bruce Peninsula, which is basically southwestern Ontario. The Bruce Peninsula is where they've parked these nuclear devices, nuclear generators that are on their way to Sweden. The Bruce Peninsula is next to Georgian Bay. It's surrounded by Lake Erie and Lake Huron. Therefore, if you look at the shape of it, it's triangular. A triangular piece of land is known as a gore. Don't you have that across the street from you? Yeah, regal and gore are important words. Gore Bay, but you also had a vice president called Gore who preaches global warming. The people across the street from us are called Gorel, Gore with two L's. Their address is 911. Their uh, piece of property is a triangular piece of land. So all kinds of links to the Bruce peninsula. The richest guy in this area is called Bruce Snowden, but his job is plastic surgery, and he doesn't do it locally. His, his clinic is at the Burns Center, which has UR in it, mm -hmm. and it's located in Windsor, which is at the end of the uh, Bruce Peninsula. It's south of Detroit. Detroit is across the river north of Windsor because of the shape of the river that happens to make it that way. So if the natives were told a story that the first human beings were born in North America, and that's the story they repeated to me, that the, it was at the Bruce Peninsula, that would link it to the Mississippi coming up from uh, the Gulf of Mexico. It would link it to the Aztecs. And if you keep on going down, it links it to 
the Inca. The word Inca is just a play on the word cane. Yeah, that's where the cocaine came from. Yeah. And when it gets to Texas, well, the Aztec becomes Texas, and they come up to Mississippi. So if you're going to go back in time, a raft going south from Chicago down the Mississippi would be a great allegory for how the manufactured, not the first people of the planet, as the natives were told, but a second batch of Caucasians on the North American continent. And they were, according to the prophecy, loaded onto a raft, which then took them to uh, the Middle East. If you were on a raft and you were being towed down the Mississippi and out the Gulf of Mexico, you would cross at around Cape Verde Islands, go into North Africa, and have a Berber escort across North Africa to Giza. From there, it's a hop, step, and a jump over to the Gulf of Arabia and up uh, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and you make your way up to where um, Akhenaten was raised about 1500 B.C. in a place called Hurry, in what we now call Syria. Again, Ben-Hur, uh, son of Hur, son of Huron, son of the Bruce Peninsula. All of these things are allegories suggesting that this second group of Samis arrived in Finland from North America, and that the Vikings, a thousand years later, returned to North America to explore the area of the Great Lakes. There's a big misunderstanding when they talk about the Vikings making a mistake and leaving Denmark and passing right by Greenland because they were off course hitting the coast of Labrador and going south. And a lot of people think that by going south, you end up going towards Florida. In fact, if you follow the coast, you would enter the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And you're going southwest on the St. Lawrence River as you are going down towards Montreal. You're not just going west. You're going southwest. When you get to Montreal, you have rapids. They call the Chinese rapids because they were looking basically for China. It, in French, it's called La Chine rapids. What do they mean by rap ID? R Hey? What do they mean by rap ID? Rap ID. Yeah, well, rapids are uh, low water flow over a rocky bottom, and therefore you have to portage your your transportation around it or build a canal to circumvent that area, which is what they did. But you got to remember the word China is also the word cane. It just has an H thrown in there saying it's connected. Mm. And that all of China began when at about the same period in time, 2000 B.C., uh, a guy by the name of Gun gave birth with his wife to a son, and that family is called Yu. Why you? And from you became the biggest uh, 
empire of dam builders in China. China always to that point had a lot of problem with flooding. And Gunn hadn't been able to solve the problem. You solved the problem because he worked at it full time. So he became the first emperor of China. Now, it's not an accident that on the St. Lawrence River at Montreal, a guy called Yu was working the bootlegging business, getting furs from Indians, and when he died, his wife, Marguerite, which means Daisy, founded the Grey Nuns. Marguerite de Youville is the founder of the Grey Nuns. And it all comes in linkage with China. If you go to uh, upriver from Montreal, uh, there's a place called Ogdensburg. It's where my wife is now in exile because they won't let her into Canada. But if you keep going south, right behind Ogdensburg, about 20 miles away, is a town called Canton, China again. If you go here in Kempsville to the Agricultural College, they're twinned with China. They're exchanging information with China on an ongoing basis. Just up the road from China is Potsdam, which has links to Germany. But the closest town to the uh, uh, Lake Ontario is called Watertown. And at the far end, closest to Montreal, is a place called Messina. Messina has a link to Italy. Now, Forgetting these names for a second, look at the topography of that area. And as you go south from the Canadian-American border, about 20 miles out, everything dips down, is much lower in elevation than those places along the seaway. So any water coming down into Lake Ontario hitting the seaway, and if isostasy is playing a role and it's rising, can't get into the seaway, can't send water d towards Montreal. By the way, that's now going northwest, you're reversing Northeast, I should say. They're reversing the southwest coming into the seaway. Everything in that line, Watertown, Canton, Potsdam, and Messina, is much lower in elevation than is the seaway itself. So any water building up in Lake Ontario will automatically flush onto land. And it will circumvent that area and flood out into New York State, mostly, in that area, and the Hudson River going down towards New York's Manhattan area will most likely arrive at a place called Flushing. Flushing, New York is not an accident. Flushing, a New York is a yeah. definition of what's about to happen. It is the Chinese area of New York City, I'm told. Yeah. It is also the place where you play can. See? <laughs> and is the component element of the new slave 
when you assemble all the pieces together, the new slave will have an exterior that's female, an infrastructure that is male, but a control mechanism which is Neanderthaler. Yeah, and the you were saying that was linked, those ten parts were linked to the uh, Horus or, um, no, not Horus, the Egyptian uh, mythology? All linked Osiris. to the story of Osiris. Osiris, the guy who starts it all, but is cut into pieces. And Isis, who finds the pieces with the exception of the penis. And the story continues with Horus. Horus is the ruse. Now, if you destroy male by hiding the male, like a Trojan horse hides inside, you have an exterior which is female, an interior which is male, it has no penis. The fertilization of the egg is done internally by a pseudo-hermaphrodite. Not the original hermaphrodite, but one with a lot of extra parts. And the extra parts that are in there is the telus communication. In the medulla, it is the, the um, uh, microphone hidden by the plastic surgeon as part of a breast implant. It is the uh, ground position device located in the other breast, which allows the slave to be tracked. It is the, uh, uh, what they call the trifibian slave. In other words, its mother gives it a new dimension because it provides it with a gill between the breasts. And the mother is called McGill University, which is at the base of the mountain in Montreal, where the CIA has been doing all of its work in Canada. Of course, it has no penis, but it will have a, a symbol of the original place it came from and that's Australia, therefore it will be marsupial. As they came out of Antarctica and went through testing in the Pacific Ocean, they were then brought back, and the original ones were kind of set free in Australia. That's why all around the world you talk of Aboriginal, but in Australia it's Aborigine, <laughs> as married women will tell you, they always write their name Ne. Ne in French, N-E-E, -E means born, their original family name. They are the first name. So the Aborigines of Australia are the first ones brought out after the Ice Age. Then the other ones are called Roma. What do you know about these? This group? Uh, I was reading a little bit about them. I can't. Um, I haven't had time to go that much into them. But the uh, the Inuit, the guys from Greenland. Yeah, the, the Inuit, uh, are, the short word is uh, Inu, Inu, but it's linked to intuition. Mm -hmm. And Inuit, Inu, were also the original Picts, oh, wow. the mountain.
mountain people before Scotland had added the Scots in Scotland, the Picts were there. That means they were tattooed with pictures. Their origin was they were the border guards of Egypt at the time of the coming of Abraham and then all of the descendants moving towards Egypt and then eventually founding uh, in Canaan, Israel. So there is a link to all of these people having a specific task 